Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's Sylvian Mayans, what are the gaming dragon? Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lucas's Path. So yeah, without that further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in. I have a feeling it might get a little spicy in this episode. I don't know why, but we're going to be spending the night with Lucas, so here's hoping things get a little out of control. Anyway, y'all, please sit back and enjoy his entertaining. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. Ooh, excuse me. Or his bottles weren't too hard to find. Both his shampoo and conditioner were neatly placed on a sh on a shelf's on a shelf selection cup to the wall. Looked like an expensive brand. I don't understand the language written on it. I think it's French. The difference between each of their products is like night and day. The moment the water washes over me, it takes my it takes my breath away. I didn't realize how much I needed this, especially after a day like today. It's like it's massaging my entire back all at once. It gives me time to really process what happened. That whole thing with the hospital. That really have just been a dream or just all of us seeing things? Is that really possible? While we were there, I could feel the heat of the flames and the cold floor beneath my feet. They all remember it too. It's not just that we happened to dream of the same thing either. They were too similar. I leaned my head against the wall of the shower and just soaked there, letting both the water and my worries wash over me. That's what shower time is for, after all. The biggest mystery is that page of the diary I found. If that's a really if that's really a missing page, why was it there? Is the diary connected to all of this? It would make sense. The easiest way to check would be to see if the page is in the diary. Maybe I'd read it already, and that's why it appeared in there. I remember, I remember hearing once that all once that uh, once that all faces in your dreams are people you know. So maybe that applies to things you read too. But I'm a little scared to read it again. Both times I've experienced something like that, but it was after I read the diary. Eh, it might just be a coincidence, but I'm not sure. What if there's something wrong with the diary, and I'm just messing with it by reading it? Then again, what if the diary is just messing messing me up and I'm just seeing shit? Either way, this is either way, reading it is probably the worst case scenario. Maybe I should ask Lucas about it. He might have something to say or slap some sense into me. Thrusting my face under the faucet, I hold my breath as the water patters against my face. I can hear my heart beating in my ears, slowing down as I force myself to relax. At least right. Even if it was something weird, there's no point in stressing about it. I'll talk to Lucas about my worries tonight and then put it behind me. With my newfound resolve, I grab a large golden bottle of body wash. I know Ari said it was okay to use, but it's so fancy that I feel bad using it. It's not even in English. I have to get cleaned up, though. I know where there's—I know there was no trace of the fire on my body, but I still want to clean every last strand of fur. Plus, it's going to be rare that I get to enjoy a shower this good. The fur drying finally ends, and it feels like I went through a vacuum cleaner. I don't have long fur, but everything's still puffing up like cotton candy. I can't fathom how horrendous it must be for Lucas. Then I notice a little snag in my plan. I didn't bring any fresh clothes with me. There's no need to panic since my apartment is only a few floors up, but that doesn't mean but that but that does mean that I'll have to head out in just my towel or put on my old clothes, neither of which is very appealing. But Lucas did just have his towel on last time I visited, so it must be pretty usual around here. I likely only have to suffer some teasing from Aura. Something that I'd probably have to deal with regardless. Packing up my clothes, I can't stop myself from inspecting them over for any signs of what happened today. I know I said I wouldn't stress about it, but it's more curiosity than anything else. As to be expected, there's nothing strange about them whatsoever. They're in the same condition as I entered the library. There's not even something strange, but anybody then... <coughs> oh, sorry, I thought I got a little scratchy there. There's not even something strange, but easily explainable. They're just normal. I suppose that's a good thing. I grab the handle and take one final breath before plunging through the door, a shroud of, a shroud of steam accompanying me like a foreboding mist. The chill of the room is more apparent now than before, and I can feel my fur prickling up as goosebumps cover my skin. I have some mild regrets about not settling for my old clothes. It doesn't look like much has changed. The only difference is instead of doing the dishes, Ari is now relaxing on his bed, browsing his phone. He still hasn't gotten changed, so he's probably planning on taking a shower tonight as well. I can't believe he's able to wear stuff like that in a cool room like this. It's not freezing, but I can't imagine it's comfortable. Then again, Lee was wearing the same thing today, and it's the middle of autumn. It's never too cold here, so it's probably not the worst or worse than our fur is long enough that it isn't, but it isn't too bad outside. One second, y'all. Water time. Hmm. Gotta love me some carbonated water. Alright. Then again, this outfit looks like something you'd wear while working out. He did mention dancing, so it's probably breezy and loose so he doesn't overheat, especially with our fur. I have a feeling the way his stomach is peeking out isn't for cooling off. Just call it a hunch. Our eyes meet, and he and his immediately trails down my body. While there's definitely some level of ogling happening, enough to bring heat to my face, he doesn't look that surprised by what he sees. Did you bring any clothes? You can wear some of mine if you want. 
It'll be a bit too big, but maybe that will make them look like they actually fit. He finishes that with a giggle, and I can't imagine what he's planning on putting me in. I get the feeling that it'll be similar to what Lee wore if Lucas's words are to be believed. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that just yet, though I can't deny I'm curious. No, it's okay. I can just run up to my room and get some clothes. It's only a couple floors higher. And just your towel. I don't have room to judge if you want to, but I can go grab them for you. It's not a problem. While it's worded like a suggestion, he's sliding off his bed like it's already been decided. Despite my lack of clothes, he doesn't have any reservations about coming right next to me. He isn't leering like how I'd imagine Oscar would be, which is nice. He probably got all the eyeful he needed earlier. The thought of that causes my face to burn brighter. And no need to get all bashful. It's okay. I've seen plenty of guys in much less than that. Even Lulu has... Even Lulu has when I forgot to warn him. I'm both immensely curious and absolutely certain I'm not going to ask about that story. I can already imagine how embarrassing that must have been, and I don't know if I can handle that. So, what do I need? Oh, here's my key. I try to reach down into my pocket, only to graze against my towel. I remember my barely covered form and the clothes in my hand, quickly rummaging through them to find my key. He takes it with little comment, though I can see him holding back a laugh. That honestly makes it worse than, he, than if he was just... And if he just laughed in my face. I was meaning your clothes, because if you leave it up to me, you might as well just wear what I got here. I got a pink one just like this. You'll barely be able to tell the difference. Uh, well... I'll even give you a little hint. Lulu would never admit to it, but I think he likes the view. As long as it isn't too flashy. He's a bit too much of a sourpuss for the real fun, to st for the real fun stuff. I can't imagine what the real fun stuff is, but knowing Aura's style and the way he acts, I can imagine it's very attention grabbing. I wonder if it'll I wonder if it'll be more than more than that to more than what Lee wore. Should I take Aura up on his offer? I don't really want to stand around in my towel much longer, and even if they're short, he's much taller than me. They'll probably just look normal if I have a bit slack. Sure, I guess I can wear that. Nothing too flashy, okay? Just I don't think I'm ready for that. Well, you'll have to try it sometime. If you do, I'll convince Lulu to wear something like it, too. I blanch at that, and the image of Lulu, I mean Lucas, uh, wearing something like that is too, it's like something, wearing something like that is something too crazy for my limited imagination. You can get him to wear that? It's not that hard. He doesn't like the attention, but he isn't scared of showing a little fur. He's a strange little bird. I can hear you, too. You're very distracting. Some of us have work to do. I know. I didn't. I, I totally forgot just how good his ears are, and if the way Aura is stifling a giggle, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just another way for him to push my buttons. But Lucas didn't deny it, or maybe he just doesn't want to acknowledge it. I should just forget about it. Aura's just messing with me. Here you go. Huh? The Martin is already handling is already handing me clothes. I have the pink shirt alongside some light gray slacks. The shirt's fabric looks softer and, more importantly, thinner than anything I've worn before. When did he have time to grab this? Did, did he? Did I just zone out? I already had this ready for you. I just wanted to watch you squirm a little. Oh, thank you very much. You really didn't need to. Don't worry. There's some of my more tamer clothes. I brought these to wear at the gym. I've only wore them once, though. I try to take the clothes before remembering the giant pile in my hand. I don't have anywhere to put this, not even a bag. I'm really unprepared for this. One second, y'all. Water time. Mm. It's a little warm out today, so keeping myself hydrated. And just throw it in my laundry basket. I'll clean them in the morning. All right. After exchanging one pile of clothes for another, I rush back to the bathroom with the Martin's clothes. I know if I waited a moment longer, he'd try to get me changed out there, and I really can't do that. The pants are too long for my legs, but they're surprisingly not too loose around my waist. They only sag down my hips a little bit. I hope this is just a testament to how fit Aura is and nothing to worry about on my end. His shirt smells entirely of his cologne, and it makes my head a little dizzy as I put it on. The combination of it and the steam is making me a little lightheaded. How does it smell this much if he only wore it once? I can still smell traces of detergent in here, so it is clean. I wonder if it's just residue from the other clothes, or maybe his cologne leaked everywhere. Oh, he's cute. He was already cute, but... Oh, I took that outfit. It doesn't go all the way down, as expected, but it's close enough that it won't be showing off too much. It just looks like, mo like, like most of my shirts when I stretch. I can handle that. I'm just thankful there isn't anything on the shirt. Lee's princess scribbled across his shirt is a bold choice and not something my heart would be able to handle people seeing me in. I don't have that level of self-confidence. I open the door, finding Aura standing on the other side with a fresh towel in hand. 
shock causes me to nearly slip on the moist floor, but the Martin reaches out and helps me stabilize. Steady there, big boy. Don't go busting your face. It's too cute to damage. Sorry, I wasn't expecting you there. No need to apologize. I'm just a little eager for a soak. Dance practice isn't easy, and I like to keep myself a little fresh. I'm already one walking stereotype. At least he acknowledges it. After letting me through, he saunters past me with a confident swagger I couldn't pull off in my wildest dreams. He tosses the towel out of view before leaning against the door, peeking past into the room. I follow his gaze to Lucas, who is finally beginning to pack, well, pack away a dozen pieces of paper scattered around him. Those definitely weren't there when I started my shower. You can borrow some of my cologne, but only use a, only use a couple drops. It's pretty strong stuff, and Lulu has a sensitive nose. Apply it to your neck, underarms, and lower back. Lower back? That's just a personal recommendation. It's subtle, but it brings the attention. And trust me. With that last piece of advice, he closes the door in my face, leaving me with many questions and a lot of theories on the answers. But I should take him up on his offer. It would be rude not to go not to after they're letting me stay the night. The clone isn't hard to find as it sits on the nightstand next to his bed, in a container I'd expect to see alcohol inside during a movie. It's written in French like everything else. Applying it feels a little awkward, mainly the dab on my lower back. I know I was likely just a little bit of teasing, but I don't but I don't think I should ignore his instructions for something this expensive looking. You're a lot like him now, huh? Lucas breaks his silence from the comfort of his own bed. He's loud enough to make me jump, something I only just avoided doing minutes ago. I've been too jumpy today. You're looking a lot like Aura, and not just because you're similar species. Now that he mentions it, I didn't realize how much Aura had put me in his style. I was just going with the flow, but now I'm not only dressed like him, but I smell like him too. I wonder if this was his plan all along. Is that a bad thing? It's an innocuous question, but it causes Lucas to hesitate and look towards the window on the far side of the room. It's hard to see, but I can see his mouth open and close a few times before he finally replies. No. He might be a little annoying, but he knows how he knows how to look good. You look nice, too. While he doesn't stutter, it's clear that this isn't something he's comfortable saying. The last words come out with a lot more uncertainty than the rest. He sounds shy. It's really sweet and a nice distraction from the rest of the day, assuming I ignore it. I ignore the way it makes my stomach twist and my eyes burn, my ears burn. My legs are getting a little tired of standing around, though I'm still not. I'm st I'm still, but I'm still unsure where to sit. Arya did say Lucas wouldn't mind if I sat on his bed, but I don't know if that applies to when he's also on it. So I opt for the chair once again. Or I try to, but I don't make it halfway before Lucas moves the laptop in front of him to the side and sits up straighter, leaving the area in front of him open for landing. Sit there. The desk is too far away. It'll be a hassle if we got another if we got another noise complaint. One second, y'all. Water time. Ah, all right. You've got one before? Yeah, apparently have a bad habit of being too loud. You can say that again. I remember the last time I came here, he nearly blew out my eardrum several times. Sure, it's mostly when he's more emotional, but I can see that being a problem for his neighbors. I take a seat on the edge of the bed, thankfully not sinking too far and disrupting the other occupant. Even if this is one of the better rooms, it's still a pretty cheap mattress. With this bed being the further point from the other end of the room, excluding the empty space between the bed and the wall, I'm able to see the entire apartment with little difficulty, including the diary sitting on the kitchen bench. I totally forgot about that. I must have grabbed it as I left, but I don't remember carrying it. That makes sense, though. It's been a pretty long day. There's something ominous about it, about it just sitting there like there's an aura oozing from it, warning me away. You can go get your food if you're staring at it. I eat here. I eat here all. I eat here all. I eat on here all the time. Just be careful. My food. Looking back at the bench, next to the diary sits my pita that we just bought. How did I miss that too? Come on, Wallace, you've got to get your head on straight. I wasn't too hungry when I brought it up when I brought it when I brought it, but before settling down and digesting what happened today, I've ended up exhausted and starving. Some dinner would hit the spot. Ignoring the groan my legs give, I get up and stroll across to get my food, but I pause before grabbing it. The diary is still sitting there. There's a temptation to grab it and keep reading it, but and keep reading, but after finding the page inside whatever we found. There's a part of me that wants to avoid it at all costs. But there's a curiosity that isn't really sated. I I won't read it tonight. I just want to see if that page is in there. If it is, then that gives me more credence to being, being a dream, right? That just means I saw it and dreamt about it. I quickly flick through the pages, looking for the mass scribbles of rewrites. It doesn't take me long to catch it. It's not even halfway to where we read up to when to with Lily yesterday. Did I really forget a page this memorable? There are many lines that are completely incomprehensible, and the amount of small entries on this makes it unique from whatever what we've read so far. 
I suppose it's possible. Outside the scribbles, there's nothing really tangible to it. There's clearly something going on with her on with her mother, but it's so vague that I can see myself forgetting. There's that pit growing in my stomach again. And I close the diary. Billy's right. I need to take some kind of break. This is really messing me up. Whatever happened is over. But I swear this diary has something to do with what's going on, and maybe just maybe it holds some answers too. I return to the bed, but Lucas isn't watching the screen anymore. Instead, he's watching me with a little intrigue. He must have been wondering why it took you so long, or saw me through, or saw me looking through the diary. I was just checking to see if the page was there, uh, the one we found in that dream. He takes a sharp breath, and in the harsh release makes his annoyance obvious. He rubs the area between his eyes, and I can't stop the guilt from building on top of the heavy weight in my stomach. That was just a dream, or some case of mass hysteria. Nothing happened. But we should just focus on right now. And right now, we're college students who have enough to deal with. We don't have time for that shit. Yeah, you're right. And he is. I know he is. But that doesn't stop my body from sulking. I don't- I didn't mean for it, because I didn't- because I know he didn't mean anything bad by it, but that doesn't help to stop my tail from drooping or my ears from pressing against my head. I can't even hide it from Lucas. He notices immediately. His scowl falls, and it's only replaced by a look of horror. Eyes wide and body standing at attention. Fuck! I did it again! No, it's fine. Alright, guys and gals, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye